Let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about greenhouse roof vents. Now, we're going to actually talk about a specific type of roof vent, the sawtooth roof vent, that's used primarily on hoop houses or a hoop house type designed greenhouse. Yes, there's roof vents on Chinese greenhouses, which are very close to a hoop house, but they're not exactly. And there's domes that have different opening triangles and other shapes, geodesic shapes that can open to get the heat out. But in particular, we're looking at the cheapest possible greenhouses with simple tech that you can use and build for your own small commercial purposes. And heat is the number one concern, especially in summer, on how to get it out. So the first thing you have to realize about heat is that heat rises. Well, heat doesn't rise, air rises when it's hotter above the other air. And that, of course, goes to the top of your greenhouse and wants out. So if we can get that heat out, easy, simple, and without using any motorized devices, well, this is gonna really affect your bottom line. And the bottom line is what matters when you're doing anything for some sort of a small commercial purpose. So at Simple Tech, this is what we're all about. So let's talk about roof vents, in particular the sawtooth roof vent for a hoop house. And let's see how that works. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of videos on greenhouse construction and growing that you could check out in our archives after you look at this one. And it's something maybe you want to do if you're looking at this. Obviously, you have some interest in greenhouses. And we go over all kinds of different subjects of what you need to know when building a greenhouse and all kinds of different greenhouses. So check out our archives. Subscribe. Check out the channel. There's tons of stuff, interesting stuff there that you might find useful. Don't forget to hit like too, eh? So probably the cheapest greenhouse that you can construct is the Quonset Hut or Hoop House. And venting these things is important because like all greenhouses, they heat up. So when you heat up a hoop house, the problem is how do you get the heat out of the top? Sure, you got the end walls and you get a little heat out of each side. But if you're putting up a decent sized personal greenhouse for a commercial purpose, you're going 100 or 200 feet long or even longer. That's a lot of distance to push hot air out. So the solution with hoop houses has generally been to have roll-up sides. Roll-up sides work. They get a lot of air in, but the problem with roll-up sides is they trap the air in the top. The solution? Vent it out of the roof. But how do you do that? Well, guess what? Alibaba in China has figured this out, and they've got kits. Now, you can build these yourself, of course, with locally sourced materials, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> I just want something that's pre-made or at least look at something that was pre-made so I can make it myself. And Alibaba has all kinds of sawtooth roof vent hoop house greenhouses that you can look at where the sidewalls, you still need the sidewalls, but they bring in fresh air and the roof vent will actually exhale the hot air and works with convection currents. So as the hot air rises, it pulls air in from underneath and that air cools your plants because it's the cool air that's near the ground that's coming into your greenhouse and it's coming up and through the roof. What's nice about the sawtooth design though is you only need a roll up on one side. You don't need both sides to roll up because your second roll up technically is the top and you want the air to move. So using the sawtooth greenhouse design lets the air move through that greenhouse the way you want it to work and the way you need it to work so the question is yes when it's hot you got to get that hot air out but the other aspect of a greenhouse is when it's cold you want to keep the heat in now i'm not talking 40 below yet here i'm just talking at night when it goes down to four and five wouldn't it be nice with your greenhouse to have it five ten degrees warmer inside so your plants are a little happier and that's where openers come in. Now, there's all kinds of opening mechanisms, and some of them are manual and they require cranks. But for me, and with the idea of simple technology, the best openers you can look at are the ones that have a beeswax phase change material in them that open and close based on specific temperatures. So when a certain temperature is hit, 
the actuator engages and the vent closes. And when a certain temperature is hit as well, um, for heat, the vent opens. You don't have to do anything. It opens, it closes. And you can have this on your top roof vent. You can also have it on your bottom. Although with a hoop house, it's probably better and cheaper to look at some sort of a roll-up device, which means you're looking at a small motor and possibly some sort of temperature sensor that will activate that motor. But if you incorporate these two together, you're gonna have a greenhouse that auto vents itself and controls its temperature without incorporating fans. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to use fans, but in a lot of climates, this is all you're gonna need. Okay, so let's say you don't live in Manitoba where I am. Let's say you're in Arizona or Australia or uh, somewhere in a hot tropical climate and you need to vent your greenhouse, but you also need more cooling. Well, what's nice about the sawtooth design is you can actually set it up with a swamp cooler. If you have your lower vents set up with a sponge-like material as a swamp cooler where it's pouring water through the swamp material and you put a fan on that so that the air coming into your greenhouse is now moisturized. Now this will only work in a low humidity environment, but you're gonna get the phase change and the cooling effect. Now what's nice is if you have the top vent, not another side vent, you're gonna exhale the hottest air, not just push the air through your greenhouse, but the air is going to come through that's cold and the hot air is going to go out the top. This is important because it's now taking a much better approach to the temperature range in your greenhouse and it's being a lot more efficient. And efficiency matters, especially when you're doing things on the cheap commercially so you're going to have the highest amount of ROI that's possible. So my suggestion for a swamp cooler greenhouse isn't the standard design where they have one side uh, where they bring the air in and they run it through the swamp cooler and you get the phase change and you cool the greenhouse and they exhale it on the other side. I think the best way to go forward to cool your greenhouse affordably if you're in an area with lower humidity is to have a swamp cooler on one side and a roof vent on the other because heat rises. Why not just take out the hot air, not all the air? Think about it. Now, what I actually love about sniffing around on Alibaba is this site is designed for commercial use. It's not really designed for the individual small user, although they will accommodate people and ship smaller greenhouses to people. But when you start looking through it, and you gotta start realizing this is one of the largest businesses in the world. The revenue that goes through this site is billions and billions of dollars. So when you start looking at sawtooth greenhouses and greenhouses with roof vents, you're not just looking at a thousand square foot greenhouses, but you start looking at multi-span greenhouses where they connect them together and have a gutter connect. And they're suddenly covering three, five, eight, 10, 15, 20,000 square feet for commercial operations. Now I understand most people aren't gonna instantly start off with that, but if you have a thousand or 2000 square foot greenhouse and you're profitable, and you start putting money aside, the cost of some of these things isn't that bad. You need to expand. And if you can start showing good revenue over two, three years, and you know what it costs to expand and get additional cover, greenhouse covering for your plants, you can actually start taking this as a business plan to your bank. Greenhouses are a business that banks get behind, especially if it's food related. In Canada and the USA too, a lot of things around our food protection are easier to get money on. There's government help, there's easier loans, there's forgiveness on loans, there's grants. So if you want to start expanding in agriculture and you don't have a lot of land, you've only got a few acres, greenhouses are the way to go. And the concerns in greenhouses are heating. So the idea of a sawtooth greenhouse, this is proven technology that you can actually take to your financial institution and get financing. And we're not talking 10, 15% interest rates here. We're talking prime rates, one and two, three, 4% commercial rates 
you're going to get some of the, if your credit's reasonable, you're going to get some of the best possible lending rates to get these greenhouses. If you've had a smaller one first and you could show that you can actually grow and that it works. That's the best plan is that if you actually take a few dollars and do this as a side job first, you can expand into a much larger operation quickly because this is the food industry and the food industry is supported by the government. So in summary, my advice is buy the biggest greenhouse you can without going broke, but don't go overboard on that. Don't necessarily finance your first one. You want to build and get functional your first greenhouse and then build a bigger one with profit from that. There's going to be problems. It doesn't matter what business you look at. Things you haven't thought of yet are going to come up. So don't necessarily buy the biggest, best thing at the beginning because you don't know necessarily what's going to happen until you get into it. If you've done this before, yes, buy bigger. But if you're starting new and this is your first greenhouse and you're doing something in the 1,000 to 2,000 square foot range, this is the way to go. Don't break the bank, have proper venting and look at venting, not just fans, but something that can exhale the heat, exhale the heat from the roof. Natural convection currents work to your advantage and give you much better cooling options than just pushing things through the side with a fan. If you're gonna use a fan, use a fan with a roof vent. Take everything to your advantage that nature offers. Hope to see you in the next video and I hope you got something out of this one.